welcome back to course of Pokemon Go game using Android Code Lane. So, as we are in sixth section of our course, in this section we will learn how to add Pokemon to our map. There should be a, uh, multiple Pokemon at the different locations onto the map, and then we will see how to add different properties to our Pokemon. Properties such as name, description, current location, uh, latitude, longitude, uh, and of course image. Each Pokemon will have different image and will be situated at different locations onto the map. And then we will compare the current location and the old location of our user to make sure that user is moving as, as per GPS on the map. So let's start. So head back to Android Studio. In our last tutorial, we created this game in which we can view the uh, user with this Mario image and we can also you view the description and the user image with name. So now in this section, we will add some Pokemon to our map and user will move towards that Pokemon. When it will reach to the Pokemon, the user can catch that Pokemon. So to do so, we need a different class which will contain all the properties of our Pokemon. So name it as Pokemon and create the class of Pokemon. We need constructor to implement all the properties of the Pokemon. Let's declare the all the properties of the Pokemon. Pokemon can have name which can be null. In same way, uh, declare all the properties of the Pokemon. Here I had declared 6 properties of our Pokemon, name, description, image, uh, power, Pokemon should have power as well, latitude and longitude which is location of our Pokemon. Now let's add this all properties into our constructor. You can use any sequence to uh, add that. Now, assign this image value to that image value. This dot Now, we need one more variable. which will be of full boolean type and we will make it by default as false this variable will become true when user will catch pokemon so i think our property file is ready now let's add all these pokemon to our map so to do so We need one more method. First of all, we will create a list of Pokemon. Here, Pokemon is a type of list which is our class name. Now, let's create a function load Pokemon. Now, in this function, we will assign all the properties and we will add Pokemon to our list. So, now add all the properties of the Pokemon. First is image. Image we have stored into our drawable folder. Dot. Select that image. Now name. Name is Char Minder. 
description description will be in string format what is power of our charmander in double value now we need to add latitude and longitude of our charmander now let's assign this value as in latitude and longitude of our charmander Now in same way we can add multiple Pokemon to our list. Now as you can see, I had added three Pokemon with different parameters, different name, different image, different latitude and longitude. Now we had added all the Pokemon into our this variable and loaded in by using this function load Pokemon. Now we need to call this function. While the application will start, first you will call that function. So call it from the onGrid method. Now let's run the program and see what output it gives. Before that, actually it's not the right time to run the program. We had just added until now. Now we need to load all the Pokemon. To display on the map, we need to load all the Pokemon. So to do so, go to my thread method. Here as you can see. We had displayed the user image and all the properties of user by using this Sydney. So we will use same pattern to display our Pokemon. This is the very uh, different section of Pokemon to show Pokemon so that it will be easy to understand. We will use for loop. Now. Here for loop we have declared a variable which is i and it will start i will start from 0 and it will go till the size of a pokemon minus 1 list of pokemon minus 1 till the last pokemon in a for loop now we need a more, uh, new variable new pokemon which will contain the current pokemon Now uh, the current Pokemon will be stored into the new Pokemon variable. Now we need if condition. If new Pokemon is catched by the user. Dot is catch is equal to one. If the, this Pokemon is not catched by the user, at that time this Pokemon will be thrown onto the map. So if condition, if the Pokemon is not catched by the user, create new variable that is Pokemon lock. Okay, okay. Let's uh, instead of uh, typing all this stuff, let's copy and paste from above. We don't need this two indexes. So instead of Sydney, let's store the location of the Pokemon into Pokemon lock variable. And uh, here, instead of location users, we need to location of Pokemon. So new Pokemon dot long log log and lat it's latitude and longitude of our new pokemon it will be of the level 10 now add this pokemon to our m map and this position is our pokemon lock and the title of our pokemon is new pokemon dot name and description of our Pokemon is new Pokemon dot PES. Now image of our Pokemon. Image of Pokemon is new Pokemon dot image. Now it can be of nullable type. So now I think our program is ready to run. Let's run the program and see if it shows all the Pokemon onto the map or not. Hope it, it will work.
So you yeah, know uh, what happened? Okay, uh, here somewhere is Pokemon. As you can see here, uh, aside there are some Pokemon as uh, so, which means that we have added Pokemon successfully to our app. But as you can see, we can't move our camera towards that Pokemon to to show, to see them. So let's resolve this problem. Why is it happening? Let's go back to our code. Now, as you can see. Here we are given as while condition true. While every time it will clear our map and it will assign the location to our user and it will stop for one second. Until the user changes its location, it will go back and it will again assign the same location. So now to resolve this problem. We need to take old location of the user as well as the new location and then we will compare both the locations and then if it is changed at that time only we can drag out the map. So to do so, let's create the variable old lo location which is of type location and uh, let's assign it value to null. Now, here in constructor all location equals to let's give some uh, name as start now all location in 11 type of longitude is equal to 0, 0.0 and let's assign it latitude as well equals to 0, 0.0 now I think our old location has been ready. Now we need to compare our old as well as new location. So in our try block, before calling UI thread method, we will use if condition if old location dot if distance. What's wrong with that? Okay, sorry. Distance to Location. Location is our current location equal to 0 f. Uh, I think, okay, we forgot to access our current location. So for that, let's create a variable here, which is of location equals to null. Now, if all location and current location distance to is same which means the location has not been changed if the location is not been changed it will continue now let me explain the code here if old location and current location is same which means the user is not moving it is he is at the constant location at that time it will continue which means it will go back to while loop it will check condition is true and come here if location has not been changed again it will go to while loop it will be in loop and when location will change and when location is changed at that time it will come down and execute all this code and now let's run the program and see if it is working fine or not I think something is wrong. What's wrong? Let's check it. We have taken the current location here. But wait. Is it right? Okay. We don't need to create a variable because we had already created in our last tutorial. I was forgotten. Sorry for that. Let's remove it from here. As you can see, we had uh, assigned current location to current location user. We had created the variable location user. Sorry for that. Now change this location to location user as well as here. Now I think it should run. Now it should run. Sorry for that. I will forward sometime the variables. I hope so it will run.
It's sugar actually. Now as you can see the program has been run, it seems nice. Let's drag the map and see if it's working or not. Yo, yuppie, it's working properly, exactly fine. As you can see all the Pokemons, we can see and also we can drag our map and we can see all our map. So, so in this way, we can uh, add Pokemons to our map. Actually, there was only one tutorial, but this uh, section has been so long, almost 20 minutes of this section. So I had break down this section into two parts. In next part of this section, we will see how to catch these Pokemons and how to move this user towards that Pokemons uh, according to our GPS. So, thanks for watching. Hope you like this tutorial.